Hello everyone, my name is Michael McCall and in this video I will be talking about posture for playing the bassoon, bassoon assembly, and making your first sound on the bassoon. So here we go. Okay, so let's start putting together the bassoon. So this is the boot joint or the butt joint and it is double board. So there's two boards, there's a smaller one and a bigger one. And they are connected with a U-pipe that needs to be protected with like an end cap or a butt cap. And this part, this end cap part is going to be essential if you are going to be using a seat strap because it's going to sit in the seat strap. As you're assembling the bassoon, you will realize that there is this lower part right here. There's the bigger pancake key with two smaller keys below it and a key above it. This needs to be facing you with this key, this ring right here for the body harness if you choose to wear one as well. This is where you would connect that there when it's fully assembled. But this is gonna be facing towards you. Next, you're gonna take the smaller of the two joints, um, the two parallel joints. This is the tenor joint or also known as the wing joint because it has this little, little wing part right here. This part has a lot of key work on it. So you're going to place it into the smaller of the two boards, um, holding onto this kind of metal part or the top portion of the boot. That's all you really need. And this part, I tend to hold it right here where I'm not pressing on any keys because what you're going to do is you're going to put it into the smaller bore and twist and push until you can tell that it's fully in. And what you can do to make sure that it's aligned is you can make sure the tenor joint has just kind of this caved out curve in it. And you can make sure that this is concentric with the bigger borehole. So meaning that this, the line of this curve isn't in line with the borehole here. And there's also a keywork mechanism here that needs to be aligned as well. So this activates a portion of your whisk, whisk whisper key there we go your whisper key so you need to make sure that this is all aligned and you can double check by pressing the bigger pancake key and at the top of the tenor joint you will see that this key here is moving all right so then from here you're going to take the long joint so the long joint is the bigger of the two joints it's also the thicker one and you are going to put that next to the tenor joint like so and essentially do the same thing where you are pushing and twisting the tenor joint into place now or the long joint into place twisting and pulling the long joint into place what you want to be careful of is that you aren't twisting too far because you don't want all these thumb keys to get bent and get placed under each other and you also have to be careful to not be grabbing any of the heavy key work in the center of the joint or really messing too much with the key work up here. So you have to carefully grab towards the top. Once the long joint is connected to the boot joint, you're going to want to make sure that these thumb keys are all in line with each other. So you have to remember you're using one thumb to touch all these keys. So if they're too far apart, that's going to be an issue for you. The easier way to check is if, applic if applicable, your bassoon does come with a body lock to lock the long joint into the tenor joint. And you can't see it too well, but in this joint, there's a small hole to which you can push this lever straight into that hole and lock it. You can see the top hole right there, the smaller one, that's where the body lock will lock into. Next, you're gonna wanna attach the bell. So a tip to attach the bell is currently we've been kind of working with the boot sitting on our knee. Now when we attach this bell, we are going to put the bassoon on the floor. So you're going to want to hold it and whatever you do when you put the whole bassoon on the floor, never just grab it by the long joint and hold it by that because you can lose the entire bottom half of the bassoon. So make sure that you keep two hands on the bassoon at all times as you put it down to the ground. Um, what you're gonna do when you attach the bell is you have this, um, it's the low B flat key. So you're gonna wanna push that in and then twist and push it onto the long joint of the bassoon. You get pretty familiar with this kind of careful twisting and pushing motion here. And 
all bassoons will have this kind of longer stem right here that will have a place for it to connect to the B flat joint. All right, you're almost done. So you have the main body of the bassoon put together. Now all you have to worry about is the vocal. You're gonna grab the correct vocal and it's the C-shaped pipe that you'll kind of find in, or question mark, depending on how you view it, metal pipe that you will directly attach the reed onto at this tapered end. Um, the vocals come in three different sizes. There's a one, two, three, or an A, B, C. Um, the one is the smallest one. It's also the most standard, um, with three being the largest one. Um, the only thing that you need to know about the vocal is that um, you're going to want to make sure that you have two at least because they are very fragile. So um, if they break, it's always nice to have a backup. Um, professionals will have uh, multiple vocals on them at all times and it's not necessarily as a replacement, but because the vocal does play a good part in the intonation and the tone production of the bassoon, they like to have multiple ones. I and a lot of beginners only work on the first size vocal, which is the smallest and also the standard. Um, as you can see what I did in the video, you want to have as many fingers on the vocal at a time, um, carefully twisting and pushing the vocal into the tenor joint. Um, the vocal itself does have this whisper key hole on it so it's just it tends to stick out like this and never is flush with the vocal um but that you want to align with the whisper key pad which is this pad that always sticks out of the tenor joint okay to get started to play the bassoon you're gonna want to take your seat strap at least that's what i'll be using today i do not have a harness but your seat strap essentially is a leather cup connected to a leather belt that has a usually has a bigger leather piece sometimes it's just just like the leather strap and you're going to lay this across your seat kind of towards the front because that's where you're going to be sitting to play the bassoon is towards the front of your seat and you're going to let the end the cup of the strap hang off the side of your seat from there on the boot joint you should have a spot with a screw for the crutch or the hand rest. You're going to insert that and then tighten the screw and you'll be set to go. Now, your hand is going to rest, your right hand is going to be at the bottom of the bassoon. So for me, the crutch kind of sits in between my thumb and my pointer finger. And the first finger goes on the first hole, second finger skips that hole, and the third finger skips the next key goes here so it's quite spread out on the back you have the pancake key and the two three other keys you can use and then your thumb kind of wants to just hover over the pancake key your left hand is going to go somewhere around these keys um, the bottom one is going to be the one that you engage the most or the middle one is a nice place to also hover over um, from there, you also are going to do one, two, three, directly on the boards, and there you go. Now, I already had placed my bassoon in the cup on the side of my seat. So, from there, you're going to want to make sure that sitting with good posture with the reed attached to the bulk of the bassoon, you want to make sure that the reed is not below your chin, above your chin, or below your chin, or above your nose, above your upper lip. You want it to basically be, if you were to sit with good embouchure, or good posture, with your playing embouchure, it should fit right onto your lip. So, let's talk about making the first sound. As we learned in Woodwind's class, the embouchure for a double reed instrument, a double reed instrument is um, 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 so you're making an um sound. The teeth are separated, the back of the oral cavity is open, your teeth are protected by both your bottom and your top lip. So we're used to protecting it only with the bottom lip, but now we are also engaging the top lip. You're going to then place the reed in your mouth about 50 to 70% into your mouth. 
And what I mean is 50 to 70% of the shaved part. So you will see on the reed itself that you have the wax to hold the reed together. You have the first wire, the second wire. And then you can see that it started to be shaved. The cane started to get shaved. So there's a little bit of a ledge right where the cane started to be shaved down to this point. So essentially it's 70 to 50% of this first, from the first wire to the tip of the reed. So all of that is gonna go into your mouth with a ratio of one to one. So that means that your teeth are going to be aligned together. And it's just sitting there. From here, you wanna just slowly blow into the bassoon. For me, I can tell now that my reed needs to be twisted a little bit more to the right because my head's leaning like this. Because although the bassoon will sit pointed to your left, you still want to make sure you're sitting up straight with proper frosting. And there we go.